All right, let's try our hand at solving these quadratic equations, starting off with 4x squared is equal to 3x minus 3. Now, if we go through that progression that we talked about, the first method we try to use is the square root property. And we notice here that you've got two instances of x, so this is a no-go. The second thing we try is the zero factor theorem, right? So the zero factor theorem would say to try to factor this, but it's kind of hard to see when it's on different sides of the equation. So first, let's go ahead and move these guys from the right side over here to the left. And so that becomes 4x squared minus 3x plus 3 is equal to 0. So let's do a quick check to see if this guy can factor, because if it can, that's what I'm going to do. So let's see, 4 times 3, if we're going to do the AC method, just to do our check, 4 times 3 is 12, and are there factors of 12 that add to 3? And there's not. No matter what you do, this guy's not going to factor. So, sorry, factoring, you are not useful here. The third method we try is completing the square. To complete the square, you want this guy to be a positive 1. It's 4. So we can divide everything by 4, which makes that a 1. But if I divide these two guys by 4, now I'm going to have fractions. So if in the process of trying to complete the square you come up with fractions, completing the square is probably not going to be the easiest thing for you. In that case, you move on to the method of last resort, which is the quadratic formula. Okay? So the quadratic formula requires us to identify the a, b, and c. And then we're going to take those guys and plug them into our formula. So let's do that. Um, our a is 4, b is negative 3, and c is positive 3. We can't identify a, b, and c until everything is on the same side of the equation and 0 is on the other side. All right, so my quadratic formula. If only there were a song. x equals equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a just like that now we plug in all right so we have x is equal to fraction negative b and let's see b is already negative so that makes this a positive 3 plus or minus the square root. Now pay attention here. This is b squared. And even though b is negative, when you square a negative, you get a positive. So b squared is always going to be a positive number. So negative 3 squared is positive 9. And just like we did in the last example, we're going to take this minus 4ac off to the side to work this out. So it's negative 4 times a, 4, times c, which is 3. All right, so negative 4 times 4 is 16, negative 16. Negative 16 times 3 is negative, negative 48. And this is all divided by 2a, so a is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. As we try to clean this up, we get 3 plus or minus the square root 9 minus 48 is negative 39. And this is all divided by 8. Now, I know a lot of times you probably just want to stay here and say this is good enough. Um, but, but it's not, right? And the reason it's not good enough is because you have a negative factor inside the radical. So you do have to simplify this. So when you finish this, you get 3 plus or minus. This negative comes out in front as an i. 39 does not factor so that you can have a perfect square. So it stays inside as 39. And this is all divided by 8. Okay. Now again, you may not believe that this is the right answer. But remember that we can always go to our calculator and check just to make sure. So let's do that here. Let's type this in for x store it into our calculator and see if this is correct. 
but you got to be careful when you do this. You've got a big numerator here, so you need to type parentheses first, and then three plus second decimal to get the i, and then the square root of 39. Pay attention to your parentheses. I'm going to use parentheses to close off the ones that started with the square root. I'm going to close off the one right here, so that closes off my numerator, and divide everything by 8. Then I'm going to press the store key and X, so all of this is going to be stored into X. Some crazy decimal, irrational number, imaginary to gross. So now that's in here, let's do this. Let's type in 4x squared. 4x squared gives me some crazy looking number, right? It's got a real part, it's got an imaginary part. Now I should be able to type in 3x minus 3 and get the exact same thing. Let's see. Now I get the exact same thing, so I, I can confirm that even though my answer is not the prettiest of answers, it is the correct answer. And it would just be a simple matter of a few button presses here to confirm that the negative one would also work. Okay. All right, let's do another one. Ah, there he goes again, trying to guess with those fractions. Well, remember, as we've talked about, you don't have to deal with the fractions. You can clear them out. But in order to clear them out, you have to first identify the LCD. Now, some of you may say, I'm just going to throw this into the, into the calculator. I'm going to do the quadratic formula. Please, oh please, do not do the quadratic formula with fractions if you can help it. Don't do that. Instead, identify the LCD, which happens to be 14. 7 goes into 14 and 2 goes into 14, so there you go. I'm going to multiply everything here times 14, and let's see what happens. Maybe I get lucky. All right, so at the very beginning, 7 goes into 14 twice, so I have 2x squared plus 14's reduce, and I have 13x minus 2 goes into 14 7 times, and 14 times 0 is 0. So this is our quadratic equation now. And let's see if we can figure out what the best way is for solving this. All right, let's go to our progression. We're never going to go away from this. Number one, can I use the square root property? You have two terms that have x, so the answer is no. The second thing we try to do is factor. Can I factor this? Well, let's see. If I do the AC method, 2 times 7 is 14. Other factors of 14 that subtract to 13. Yeah, yeah, there are. So if I do AC, so A times C is 2 times 7, and I get 14. The factors of 14 that subtract to 13 are 1 and 14. So what this tells me is that I should use factoring. Like I know how to factor. Let me just go ahead and factor. Granted, you can also throw this into the quadratic formula. You'll get the same answer, but it'll take a lot more steps to get there. So, uh, let's factor this. So 2x squared, and knowing the correct signs here, I'm going to have uh, minus 1x and plus 14x. And then it's just a matter of finishing the factoring by grouping, if this is the way you like to do it. Or maybe you kind of want to do a you know, guess and check. That works too. So x is the common factor. And we're left with 2x minus 1. Plus, in the second group, you have a common factor of 7. Oh, not using the right color there. Factor that out, and I've got 2x minus 1. And now we can finish this factoring by grouping because 2x minus 1 is exactly the same. So 2x minus 1 times x plus 7 is equal 
to 0. So from here, x is equal to 1 half, or from the other factor, x equals negative 7. So you get two nice rational answers. So I say, if you can factor, that is really the best way of doing it. Now suppose that you didn't want to do that. And let's see how this compares to using the quadratic formula. Ugh, I'm already getting sick just thinking about it. Okay, so your quadratic formula, again, write it down every time you use it. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right. So here we have x equals big fraction. You're working with this equation right here. So negative b is going to be negative 13 plus or minus. All right, b squared. Well, b is still 13, so b squared is 169 minus 4ac. So let's circle this. This is negative 4 times 2 times negative 7. So negative 4 times a times c. And this gives me, that's 8 times 7, so it's a plus 56. All divided by 2a, so 2 times 2 is 4. All right, so x is equal to negative 13 plus or minus the square root. All right, so when I combine these guys together, I get 225. So finish this. Just because you get a square root doesn't mean you stop. The square root of 225 is 15. Right? Now, aren't you glad that we decided to do the quadratic formula? I'm not. Now, see, students will sometimes stop here, or they sometimes stop here. But remember, since there's no um, radical or anything imaginary, you have to separate to get your two answers. So, negative 13 plus 15 over 4 becomes 2 over 4, which is 1 half. And the other solution is x equals negative 13 minus 15 over 4. So the numerator is negative 28 divided by 4, and you get negative 7. And you might say, see, we get the same answers. Uh, yeah, we get the same answers, but I'm not sure it was worth it. And the reason I say that is because I'm pretty good at factoring. Factoring is one of my favorite things to do. Quadratic formula, I get larger numbers, and there's more simplifying that I have to do at the end. But I want you to know what the options are, and also want you to know how we go through the progression like we did here. I'm going to be doing that for every single quadratic equation that we come across.